Well, welcome again, and uh, thank you, Roger and Terry and all of our music folks and everyone making worship possible this morning. And we got out the red for our mothers, honoring them, so uh, it's good to see that. We continue our series on home improvement, and this morning we're looking at the five languages of love. We're in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, selections in that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, and his own did not receive him. Yet to all, all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. The Word became flesh and made us dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Out of His fullness we have all received grace and grace already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is Himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made Him known. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts and minds this morning. Well, as I said, we're looking at the five love languages this morning. Heard the story of this uh, woman who lost her longtime husband and uh, had the funeral. Her husband had left her $20,000 in insurance money. And it was just a few weeks after the funeral that this woman went to her friend and asked to borrow some money. And her friend said, well, I thought your husband left you. $20,000 in insurance money. She says, well, yes, I spent $5,000 on a funeral and $15,000 on the memorial stone. And the woman said, wow, that must have been some kind of memorial stone. And the woman held out her hand and said, yes, three and a half carats. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lesson there somewhere. <laughs> and all the ladies said, oh, no, <laughs> Husbands, make sure you get that gift now, okay, or significant others. All right. Well, we're looking at the five love languages this morning, and you may have heard that, but it, it, it's by Gary Chapman, who's a, as a pastor and also a counselor, and uh, he says that we all have five love languages, so you may know those. So uh, as we walk through those, it's uh, words. So we've got words of, of appreciation and kindness. We all like great words, as Terry was talking about this morning. And as a matter of fact, I wrote that fifth verse for God of our fathers and mothers in honor of my mother. It was some time ago. So uh, that was a tribute to her. I always write her a note, not just a card, but write something special on there. And uh, I know you love to write notes too. And then Acts. So acts of kindness or service. Man, my mom used to love that when we'd get up and do the dishes for her or bake cookies or something. So hint for some of those uh, kids out there. And then gifts. Of course, we all know gifts. We think about gifts for Mother's Day. And it isn't necessarily the, the size of the gifts or the expense of the gifts, just the thought. Um, I love it when my daughter gets, she gets very, very thoughtful gifts. And the thing that I like almost, if not better than the gifts, she makes handmade cards. And I have all those handmade cards. She's a bit of an artist, and I just love those. In fact, if she misses one, I'll say, where's the card? <laughs> you know, the handmade one, right? And, uh, and so love the gifts. And then, of course, time. And by time, we mean quality time, right? So um, for the men out there, uh, that's not sitting at the breakfast table uh, reading the newspaper. <laughs> and all the women said, Right, or, or watching ESPN, or, you know, now for all of us, what? The cell phone. Oh, my God. It's the greatest technology and the worst technology for all of us. And then the, the final one is, is touch. So, uh, physical touch uh, might be a kiss, a hug, uh, might be a back rub, anything. So, those five things. So, we're talking about words and acts and gifts and time and touch. And here's what he says. He says, we all have all five of those, right? But the thing is, uh, we both send and receive. And many times we have, we all have like the top two or maybe three of our love languages that we like to receive. But it may also be different that we have love languages that we send signals of love. 
What is even more confusing is many times couples, even couples who've been together for years, don't have the same sending and receiving top love languages. Are you with me? And there lies the confusion, right? So uh, a, a wife might really uh, not so much want gifts as time, quality time, maybe just uh, time uh, taking a walk or a drive or something or conversation. And so the question for all of us, and, and really indeed the challenge, is to know what our top love languages are. You can look in the, online. There's lots of nice assessments online that are free. And then even more importantly, to know what our partner's significant love languages are and to send and receive in ways that are complementary. Now, again, we all have all those five, but how are we doing with communicating, sending and receiving, and growing in communication, expressing the love that is so important? And we think about that today on Mother's Day. But I think there's something else here, which is that in a very real sense, God also communicates to us in all five of those love languages, if you think about it for a moment. And so we think about words that God has given us. And it says this in John 15, 9, as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love from Jesus himself. And many of you know one of my favorite verses too is Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Beautiful uh, words of love. And then acts, of course, of, of love and kindness. Uh, we think again of 1 John 3, 16 through 18 that Roger read earlier. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our laws for our brothers and sisters, right? And so that's so important for us. And then in Philippians chapter 2, it talks about um, Jesus setting aside, even though his uh, was equal with God, to set aside all of his divinity and to come and to be human with us and to experience and to be a servant for all. And of course, when we think of gifts, we can't help but think of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. And so God's greatest gift to all of us. And for time in our call to worship from Psalm 46, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God, that God, the creator of all the universe, wants to share quality time with us and then touch. This is beautiful because uh, you think about it, obviously, uh, this John 1, uh, it says this about the creator of all that was. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The living word was God. And God made himself known and in the end it says this, for law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God, is closest in relationship with the Father, has made God known to us. Emmanuel, God with us, that we could see in a very real sense, touch. And we also think about other moments in Scripture. One of the most moving moments in, in captured in all the synoptic Gospels is when uh, Jesus was out and all the parents were trying to have Jesus touch uh, their kids on head and to bless them personally, and the disciples pushed them away. And what did Jesus do? Jesus said, no, let the little children come to me, to, for such is the kingdom of God. And he took time and blessed each child individually, and so that physical touch is so beautiful. And of course, we think of so many other moments in Scripture, too, when, when Jesus would touch the the blind and the lame. And lepers, of course, were outcasts, and Jesus touched them personally to, to heal them. And many moments were so personal with God. And in our own life, to be able to receive those love languages from God, maybe even to broaden how we hear or, or feel God's love language to us. But there's also the sense in which we can communicate to God in all five of those love languages as well, if we really think about it. So when you think about words, we think about what we're doing this morning, worship, which is to ascribe worth to God. Not just to mouth the lyrics, but to actually sing praise to God with our, with our heart and with our soul, and to share into Scripture, or maybe to read and reflect on Scripture. We think of acts of kindness, and just to continue with that Scripture uh, of 1 John three sixteen to 18, it says this, if anyone has material possessions and sees his brother or sister in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us love not just with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Wow, powerful for us to, to think about that. And then also gifts. 
We, can, we talk about giving our time, treasure, and talents, and, and it's not how much, but the heart and the act uh, with which it's given. We think about Jesus noticing the widow who gave one mite, which was smaller than a penny at the time, but Jesus singled her out to all the disciples and said, look at this widow giving, and they didn't understand it, but Jesus said, others have given out her abundance, but she has given all that she has. So how are you about giving gifts from your heart and with an attitude of thankfulness and blessing and, uh, and, and to just give in that way with the spirit that this widow did, with the widow's might, if you will, our time and our treasure and our talent. And then quality time. Once again, that scripture verse from Psalms 46, be still and know that I am God, is a two-way street. God is willing to share time with us. Are we willing to share time with God and just to listen to the whisper of God on our hearts and minds uh, this morning or any time. And of course, touch. How do we touch God? Wow, I think there's so many ways we can touch God, but remember at least in Matthew 26 what it says. When Jesus gives this picture of the last judgment, what does Jesus say? In as much as you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. For those of you who visited in prison and those you've given a cup of water who were thirsty, those who are hungry and you've given food, those you've given blankets who are cold, and that's the way that we can touch God and a way to, to bless God. I know there's so many other ways too, but how are we doing, not just at sending and receiving love for those significant others in our lives, but also listening to God's many ways of expressing love to us and also expressing our love to God in a whole range. And as we grow, not just in one, but we can express in, in all five ranges. And so how are we doing with that? Now, here's something that's interesting, I think, which is that the cross, in a very real sense, is all five languages of love in one moment, doesn't it? You think about words of affirmation, what did Jesus say from the cross? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Ending it, it is finished. That he had given his all, his life, that we might know God's forgiveness and, and grace. And we think of Acts, of course, the cross itself was an, was an act, right, of surrendering himself, giving his life that Jesus would give his life in place of us, so it's both an act and a gift, the greatest gift of all times. And then we think of, of time. And there's that beautiful moment on the cross where the thief next to Jesus, who's suffering and recognized his need, and Jesus takes time in a moment of his own suffering and anguish beyond which we could ever understand even, and says, this day you will be with me in paradise. Time with a, a stranger, an outcast, from society, but Jesus is willing to take that time and to reconcile. And then physical touch. Well, the cross is really all about physical. I mean, I think about the, the cross itself as a symbol, as a, the vertical symbol, as sort of a healing, the gap between heaven and earth. And I think about the horizontal way in which Jesus literally had his arms outstretched. And then there's the moment, really, for all of us when, what did Thomas say? He said, unless who missed the first resurrection appearance and, and the second one, he said, unless I touch his hands where the nails were driven, unless I put my hand in his side, I will not believe. And Jesus, when he appeared to Thomas, did not scold Thomas, but said, touch my hands, touch my side, stop doubting and believe. And I think those words echo through history to all of us. But there's also a sense in which we gather around the Lord's table this morning and we share the bread and the cup. And in that way, I think there's a special touch of God's grace and love that comes to us because we are people who need to touch in some sense. And so we are invited by Jesus himself to gather as disciples around the table of God's love and grace this Sunday and so many other Sundays. Today, where are you in your search for God's love and hearing God's voice of love in so many ways from creation that's all around us to the whisper of scripture, to the sunlight and to the spring flowers blooming all around us and the acts of love we see in scripture and gathering around the Lord's communion table. 
I invite us and even challenge us to grow in love for each other, sending and receiving, but also to hear God's voice and love in so many different ways, as well as to grow in our expression of love towards God. I want to end with reading Scripture, which I love, which is a love letter from God, which combines all of these through actual quotes of Scripture. And so I want you to just listen on whatever plane you're, you're listening and your, your frequency is, but really to see that all of this is love. And again, these are actual Scriptures, a love letter from God. My child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when I rise up. I am familiar with all your ways from Psalm 139, a scripture that Vanita Hazelwood personally picked for her memorial service when we celebrated her life yesterday. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered, Matthew 10. For you were made in my image, Genesis 1. In me you live and move and have your being, for you are my offspring, from Acts 17. I knew you before you were conceived, Jeremiah 1. I chose you when I planned creation, Ephesians 1. You were not a mistake, for all your days are written in my book. Again, Psalm 139. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live, Acts 17. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's room, Psalm 139, and brought you forth on the day you were born, Psalm 71. I've been misrepresented by those who don't know me, John 8. I am not distant and angry, but I am the complete expression of God's love, 1 John 4. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you, 1 John 3. Simply because you are my child and I am your father, again, 1 John 3. Uh, I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, Matthew 7, for I am your perfect father, Matthew 5. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand, James 1. For I am your provider and meet all your needs, Matthew 6. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope, Jeremiah 29. Because I love you with an everlasting love, my thoughts towards you are countless as the sand on the seashore, Psalm 139. And I rejoice over you with singing, Zephaniah 3. I never stop doing good to you, Jeremiah 32. For you are my treasured possession, Exodus 19. I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul, Jeremiah 32. And I want to show you great and marvelous things, Jeremiah 33. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me, Deuteronomy 4 and Jeremiah 29. Delight in me, and I will desire, give you your desires of your heart, Psalm 37. For it is I who gave you those desires, Philippians 2. I'm able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine, Ephesians 3. For I'm your greatest encourager, 2 Thessalonians 2. I'm also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles, 2 Corinthians 1. When you are brokenhearted, I am close to you, Psalm 34. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart, Isaiah 40. One day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, Revelation 21 and continuing, and I'll take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth. I'm your father, and I love you even as I love my son Jesus, John 17. For in Jesus, my love for you is revealed, John 17 again. He is the exact representation of my being, Hebrews 1. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, Romans 8. And to tell you that I am not counting your sins, 2 Corinthians 5. And Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you, 1 John 4. I gave up everything I love that I might gain your love, Romans 8. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you will receive me, 1 John 2. And nothing will ever separate you from my love again, Romans 8. Come home. I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen, Luke 15. I have always been father and will always be father to you, Ephesians 3. My question is, will you be my child, John 1? I am waiting for you, Luke 15. Love your dad, almighty God. Amen. God is reaching out to us in love. Are we listening? Are you receiving in all those different ways? 
I encourage and challenge all of us to grow in our expressions for love for each other through those many ways, words and acts and gifts and time and touch. But realize that God is speaking to us in all those levels and more, and we have the opportunity to give our love back to God in all those ways and more. Will you join me in prayer? Lord, we thank you for, for our mothers on this special Mother's Day. Help us to grow as we express our love and gratitude to our mothers. We also thank you for your great love for us as the creator of all that is and our creator, Lord. So, Lord, help us to, to hear your words of love and your acts of love, your gifts, your time, your, the way you touch us in so many ways, and help us, Lord, to, to send our love back to you. In all those avenues and more, as, as we express our love, we know that we grow in love for you. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and all God's people said, Amen.